Two days after this massacre, authorities are slowly admitting that everything they told us was in fact untrue. There was no school resource officer. They're not even sure the door was barricaded. These matter, these questions. Okay, so oh, oh, Tucker, he's getting frustrated with the cops now. Fox News starting to finally realize after only their entire lives that cops might lie, that at official police press conferences, you can't necessarily trust what they have to say. That has been true their whole lives. It's never bothered them before because they've liked the lies that cops have told. But now they understand that everybody is really angry about the Uvalde mass shooting, and they're supposed to pretend for a few days that they're angry too. And so we're gonna go into a little bit more of some of their hosts having an issue with all the lies. Here is a bit more of Tucker Carlson. So the point is not to point fingers or blame people. Nobody wants a school shooting, everyone's heart is broken by it. But the authorities are not allowed to lie to us in the aftermath of an event like this. Even at the Parkland school shooting, when police staged outside and students were being murdered, police wound up inside the building 11 minutes after the shooter. But in this case, it was 16 minutes. Why was that? We have a right to know, but today, police wouldn't say. Was there a school resource officer who exchanged fire with the gunman? That's not something you would imagine, that either happened or it didn't, and you would know right away if it happened or it didn't. It didn't happen, but they said it did happen. That's a lie. Why did they lie? No matter how pro-law enforcement you are, and we are, there's only so much BS you can take in the face of a tragedy like this. At least until a few more days go by and then he'll stop talking about it. So look, he's at least admitting that the cops are lying. Um, my, I guess, knee jerk reaction would be, and thus what will change about Tucker Carlson and his approach to policing or the funding of, of policing? What sorts of candidates will Tucker Carlson support and endorse in the future? What will their approaches to law enforcement or gun control be, will be? Like nothing, nothing is going to change. Um, so that's my frustration. Tucker Carlson is good at reading the room and getting an idea if belatedly when he's wrong on a topic. It took him several weeks, for instance, on the war in Ukraine. Um, but I don't think that he's actually going to change. He's not gonna be more questioning of the cops, but maybe you're more, more optimistic. No, I mean, <laughs> that would be ironic, but, um, but no, I do see something breaking at Fox News. Like this, uh, apparently there's a line. Uh, before we never saw a line in our entire lives from from the minute that Fox News went on air to now, there was no bottom to that barrel. Uh, but now several anchors coming out going, maybe all those dead kids is a slight, slight problem. Maybe we should do something. Maybe that cop who's obviously, obviously lying, maybe we'll report for the first time in Fox News history that a cop might have lied. And so, but wait, really fast though. His issue is that there might not have been an armed cop out the outside of the front door. Like he, like at the end of the day, what he wishes was true is the same stuff that all those other Fox hosts and Republican politicians have been calling for. Tucker Carlson, unless I've missed it, is not saying we can't trust these cops. This whole situation is crazy, and thus let's ban assault rifles. No, no, of he just wants not. more no. armed people on schools. No, John, I totally get that, but we're not looking for like it. And overnight, Fox News, oh, we were right, wrong, we're, we're now progressives. <laughs> of course not, right? <laughs> but the reason why this is important, we're gonna show you a couple more clips. The reason why this is important is because their audience, remember, does not watch any other media. So for their entire lives, that right wing audience has been taught and brainwashed that cops are the most angelic, most honest people you will ever meet. So for the first time in their lives, they're hearing from right wing media, that maybe cops are liars, at least on some occasions. And that's a new thought for them. It introduces a new concept, and that is the beginning of change. And I'm not giving Fox credit, I'm just pointing out, okay. even they couldn't take this. And you'll see more in a second. Yeah, I think you know Fox is incapable, all of their hosts, their producers, the people who fund them, incapable of doing anything outside of their own self interest. And I've been thinking, you know, what is their self interest in actually supporting gun control? And if you think about it, every single mass shooting that we've had recently has been either deliberately or pretty clearly racist, right? Or has had clear racial undertones. And who is pushing white nationalist rhetoric? It's Fox. So if there is ever a violent response in some capacity to these mass shootings, 
Fox is a huge target. And I honestly think they're starting to get scared that they're complicit and sometimes the cause of these mass shootings. And also I would point to guns in America being used to uphold white supremacy now and since our country's founding. And when I think about federal background check legislation, including misdemeanors like disorderly conduct, like simple possession of marijuana, that's going to disarm the communities most affected by over-policing. There's a reason that Reagan was pushing gun control when the Black Panthers decided to arm themselves. And so I don't think Fox's intentions are pure, but that doesn't mean that this can't have a positive impact. Okay, I, I will try to be optimistic. <laughs> I will try to push out of my mind that Tucker Carlson spent the entirety of 2020 being perfectly fine with the cops, brutalizing protesters in cities throughout America, breaking people's skulls and driving into crowds. And he didn't have an issue with Trump black bagging people and tossing in the back of unmarked vehicles. And he was fine with them clearing protesters out of the front of the White House, battering people who are just playing guitars. He is one of the most active enthusiasts for a tyrannical police state. So I'm, I'm gonna take his newfound criticism of the cops with some massive grains of salt, some Anna Kasparian sized grains of salt. But in any event, he's not the only person at Fox. So let's go to a person who admittedly has been more reasonable more times than Tucker Carlson. This is Brian Kilmeade. The kids were bleeding. So the sooner you get in there, who knows what an EMT could have been able to do had they got in there quicker. And they're not trained essentially to handle this. And there's no excuse to leave that back door open. And there's no excuse to come out with some fable that they were engaged by a resource officer that was armed when that is flat out fiction. That is, that's not bad communication, that is a lie. And, and like I said, Brian Kilmeade, I think, is among the most reasonable people at Fox. My issue even with that is he is now identifying a problem, cops lying. That trains the audience to think a solution is more honest cops or more brave cops when those are not the solutions. The solutions are for the guy to not have an AR-15. Well, I could use some more brave cops too. And by that, I mean, don't train them to not ever risk their lives. Uh, don't train them that their lives are more valuable than the citizens' lives. So that's how you get braver cops if you don't teach them to be cowards. Sure. So it's a start. And look, Brian Kilmeade's uh, no, you know, uh, lib either. I mean, by a long, long stretch, he's wrong 98% of the time. So wow, he's better than Tucker Carlson by a couple percentage points, right? Yeah. But this isn't about Brian Kilmeade or Tucker Carlson being good guys. This is about even Fox News apparently having a limit and going. Well, I guess that kids are bad, mm -hmm. and I so and they obviously lied, and they obviously didn't go in the building. Even we can't cover this up. Okay. Yeah, I think there are pieces of the problem that are being addressed by some of the legislations and solutions that are being you know produced at this time. But I think in this moment, we've really got to think about comprehensive solutions. And I want to quote Akila, who's an organizer and community leader, who said this week. The solution to school shootings is not arming the teachers. The solution to school shootings is not putting more police in schools. It is crazy to think the solution for gun violence in schools is to put more guns in schools. The solution is funding these schools, the community, providing living wages, addressing poverty, homelessness, providing universal access to health care, therapy. The solution is so far beyond gun reform or gun control. Get rid of the second amendment entirely, disarm the police, then disarm the people you've been lied to and the experiment has gone horribly wrong. And with that said, you should be defunding the police, defunding the military and reallocating that money to the people and these communities. And I think you know that's a really big statement and there will be a lot of people saying something like that's never gonna pass through Congress right now. Nothing is passing through Congress right now, not even the compromise legislation, HR 1446. And I think in this moment, we need a response of equal magnitude to the problem. I mean, I'll take background checks. I mean, if they banned assault rifles, I would be ecstatic. Look, I, I'll be honest, I'm afraid that the defund police talk now is just gonna help them go, Oh, that's it, we're not doing anything. Because doing something means defunding the police. Mm. And now everybody's even more scared for their kids. So I don't I don't love the timing on that, if I'm being honest. So uh, but but and defund the police is over here. 
17 incredibly reasonable, massively popular positions are right here. And we won't even take the first inch towards that. Yeah. So, uh, but we have one more Fox anchor here, Martha McCullum, actually proposing some degree of gun control, never seen before on Fox News. It's a guardrail, right? If you, if you make it a 21 law, or as someone suggested, even making it so that you have to have, you know, you can't rent a car until you're 26 years old in this country. And everybody likes to go driving on the weekends too, right? Um, but you can't do that. You can't rent a car until you're 26. Another suggestion is to have an older adult of a certain age who comes along with you for the purchase of that gun uh, in order to have that background check done. There are, there are things that will not take away anyone's freedom uh, and that might help to save some lives, and I think it's time for people to come together on both sides of the aisle and figure out what some of those might be. See, I already see John getting frustrated at, at what a minuscule proposal that is. No, I'm, I'm okay with I'm, I'm okay with most of that. It is minuscule, but it's Fox that I'm okay with. I was more getting frustrated, like she's pointing out the other thing with the car and everything. I was just thinking about the fact that in Texas you literally can't smoke marijuana. Too dangerous. Too dangerous marijuana. You can have an AR-15, which would allow you to serve in like most militaries around the world. But uh, but weed too too dangerous. So I'm frustrated, but I'll take I'll take all the things she just said. But if like saying that you can't buy a gun until you're 26, as she's partly alluding to there, that would be the biggest gun control law we've had in decades in America. Yeah, and that's and even Fox News is saying, well, I mean, bounds. Why don't we do that? And by the way, Geraldo also argued for gun control in that segment. In another segment, Neil Cavuto challenged Senator Ron Johnson saying, because he said the school shootings are because of critical race theory, because he's a lunatic. And Cavuto said, but school shootings have been happening long before CRT. So that's anchor yeah. number four or five now. And, and then they had Lee Greenwood on and he uh, has the songs about how pr he's proud to be an American, which by the way, secretly I love. Uh, it's not <laughs> such a secret, I've said it many times. Uh, and he was going to go. Uh, he's a big conservative, and he was going to go sing at the NRA convention. He pulled out, and he was on Fox News, and he said on Fox News, "I can't be supporting these guns that got all these kids killed." Yeah, that's why I came out of the convention. So it is the first time a conservative audience is hearing that guns might not be so great, and that cops might not always be honest. To me, that's a huge development. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.